this um, whole entire movement, and I call it a movement, is to really start to bring more consciousness to our community about what is still needing to be done for young women, for children, and for us women in terms of social, political, emotional, psychological um, healing that we still need to do in our families, ourselves, our, our communities, and globally. And you all can turn on the news every day and see what's happening in the world and in our community. So Give Her a Voice, you know, is an organization that started a year ago. We're a very grassroots group, very grassroots. We did our first production, The Telling, uh, in April. We're needing a lot of very strong women to come forward and to give a voice to the issues at hand for women. Because when women are still being oppressed and women are still hiding in their own shame, in their own fear, in their own doubt, then we can't be mentors, we can't tell the stories, we can't heal the wounds and put together the pieces of who we are and then share that and let it go into the world. So before I begin, and I just want to show a quick little visual, because our organization is about healing the trauma of abuse through art and soul. And trauma is the issue. And this is not being fully, fully educated to the public yet, what trauma actually is and what it does to the mind, body, and soul, and what it is doing to us right now and we don't even realize it. Because we're so anesthetized to the violence in our world, whether it's within our families or globally or on television, that we don't recognize that we are shutting down inside of our bodies. We're holding fears. We're holding paralyzation to be able to speak out and say something. Because our, our culture, our society, generally speaking, represses that. I mean, we look in the world and the people who do step out, somehow they're violently attacked, particularly women. Women are constantly attacked for how they look, how they speak, how they present themselves, what their issues are, for their emotions, for their power. And it, this, is, this is kind of a revitalization of a movement for women. And I don't want to exclude men, because I feel men are affected by this as well. We live in a culture that tells men they have to be a certain way as well, and that traumatizes them. So I just want to give this quick visual, and then I'm going to speak a little bit more about the organization. Trauma spreads like an octopus, and it, and it produces behaviors such as addiction, eating disorder, anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, sleep disorders, migraines, um, chronic medical conditions, so many things that the medical profession and the psychological profession is trying to medicate because we're not trained to deal with trauma. Trauma busts the brain open, cracks the heart, fragments our soul, and we for uh, forever searching for ourselves, trying to find the answer to fill this. But what can fill this is us, ourselves, our hearts, our bodies, our nurturing, our nourishment, to want to reach out and touch another person and have the compassion and the empathy for the pain that trauma causes. We are anesthetized to pain. We turn on the television set and we go, oh well. Whatever happened to me in the past, get over it. Think positively. But these things traumatize us more. They trigger us. And we're triggered every single day when we're out in the community, when we're out in our lives, when we're just in the corporate world and in our schools. I mean, I taught in the schools for seven years. I know what's going on in there with the children. They are constantly being traumatized over and over and over and over to learn subject facts. And this is not how learning takes place. It happens through 
or imagination or souls or creativity and learning. We want to motivate, we want to empower, and that is what Giver and Voice is about, that when we begin to come out and tell our stories of what traumatized us, and it's, you know, in today's society, in terms of what is violence against women, we say domestic violence, and yes, this is a very high percentage. And it's also emotional abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, abuse between men and women, abuse to children, abuse between women and women, mother and daughter. There is abuse that is through family systems. It's everywhere and in every way, and some of it is obvious, and some of it's very subtle. But we can no longer allow for these subtleties we have to address them, because if we don't begin to heal ourselves and make ourselves whole, and fill this darkness that lives within us, we will continue to create a world, a global world, that's going to sodomize women in war. In, in, in um, Angelina Jolie's movie, Sweet <coughs> Honey, she had the courage to make the film about the Bosnian War. And I had to really grit my teeth to watch this movie because millions of Muslim women were sodomized, raped, children were killed in this movie, and she had the courage to show this. This is not talked about. And there is a very ancient teaching that is called the Olam Tikam, and it means that we're here to mend the world. We're here to mend ourselves. We're here to have the compassion to not say to somebody when they're sad, well, just, just do something funny, go watch a movie, or you know, go, go have a drink. This is encouraging and enabling us to say not to what we need to talk about. If a child comes up to you and wants to tell you their pain and they're crying, you don't tell the child, shut up, but unfortunately that is what happens. I want to say the reason why we chose misrepresentation as part of our mission as fundraiser is because in the media, we don't even recognize on a daily basis how women are disparaged and the images and the violence against women and who they are or every single day disparage in the media, and you're going to see this in this film. Young girls don't have models. They don't have mentors. We are still healing ourselves as women. We're still coming out of a time where the abuse has been generational and cyclic. You know, if you go back into your own family histories and you look at the women in your family or the men in your family and the things that they have to survive and recover from, we're just a product of that, and it's all within us. We are still holding this trauma from all the generations that's within us. And we have done well as women. We have, we have done well to come forward, but we are still being attacked. One out of ten women are on antidepressants. You go to a doctor, you tell them, I'm depressed and anxious, they give a pill. They don't stop and say, what happened to this person? That is where the compassion and the empathy has to begin to ask the question. And give her a voice. We have the women come forward to tell their stories. Because every story is a piece of ourselves. Every story awakens us and helps us heal and become whole. And all those pieces that we need to find like a puzzle piece that we search for is in our own stories. And somebody asked me, do these women who are telling their stories, do they stay in their victim? Do they, do they, does it just bring them back to the memory and keep them in their victim? And this is what people don't understand, is when you don't tell your story, you stay in the victim. Because that energy, that, that, that pain, stays in the body. It stays there. It is, it, brain research has now shown this, that the brain becomes traumatized. The, the, the cellular dendrites in the brain become like you become if you're in a car accident. And the only way that it can heal if we begin to witness one another, receive one another, care for one another, understand one another, and not reject, not be afraid of when someone has been abused. 